Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. This is episode number 151, and for this one, we're back at Bellagio playing cash. But before we get started, I have one announcement that I'm excited to share with you guys. I've teamed up with PokerCoaching.com to give you free premium access for three days to their site. I have the link down below in the description box. Click on that, there's no credit card requirement, and you can soak up all the content that you want. There's no limit on the amount of stuff that you watch or anything. So uh, take advantage of it. I don't really do a lot of promos on this channel, but this is something that I really believe in. I did the 30 day tournament challenge leading up to the WSOP last summer. And I really went into the WSOP, uh, or really went into the course, not having much of an idea of what I was doing with tournaments, but I got nine WSOP caches, including one in the $5,000 main event. And actually in the last three tournaments that I played, I've cashed in all of them, including a WSOP circuit event yesterday, and I won a small charity tournament about a week ago. So this stuff really helps if you dedicate yourself to it and take it seriously. They just came out with a 30 day cash game challenge as well. I haven't had a chance to look at that yet, but I imagine it's great. They have some of the best poker coaches in the world with over 50 million in tournament earnings, and they're just, giving you all their knowledge for free at this point. Um, there's interactive hand quizzes, which in my opinion are the most fun way to learn. They have all kinds of webinars, videos, challenges, and they have a lot of tools that are at your disposal if you have a membership. They have GTO preflop charts for both cash games and tournaments, which in my opinion are very, very important for anybody who wants to be a winner in the game. They lay the foundation for your entire poker strategy, and it's just super, super important. So. Uh, check it out, click on the link down below, and uh, you know, take advantage of the, of the free giveaway. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're playing 510 at Bellagio and are in for 1500. We're getting right into it now. We pick up Ace 10 suited in the cutoff, under the gun limps in, not a move recommended by many poker books. A player in middle position also limps in. I check my watch. It's indeed time to punish the limpers. We raise to 50. We'd love to play a bigger pot in position with what's likely to be the best hand. That won't be happening because the button calls behind us. You could have all kinds of hands like small or medium pocket pairs, suited connectors, or Broadway cards. Under the gun calls, middle position player calls, we're going four ways to the flop. It's 10 7 4 with two spades. We've got top pair, top kicker. Checks to me, this is a somewhat precarious spot. Top top isn't all that great when you have three other opponents. There aren't very many cards on future streets that I'll like that much. I bet 80, hoping to win this right now or at least get the button to fold. The button ruins the plan once again. He calls. This signifies quite a bit of strength given that two other players are left to act behind him. Under the gun folds, middle position player calls. We're down to three of us. I don't want to see a spade or any non-ace card above a five. No need to worry. The turn is miraculously the ace of hearts giving us top two pair. That helps ease my concerns. Middle position player checks. We're firing again, this time for 220. The button takes a play out of Elsa's book and he lets it go. The middle position player is more of a John Bon Jovi fan. And he's gonna hold on to what he's got. Sorry about that. Sometimes the commentary is best presented in song form. We're heads up. The river is the four of hearts. He pairs the board and the backdoor flush draw gets there. The opponent checks. I'm not sure how the opponent would make it this far with a four in his hand. It's also unlikely that I'd be up against a heart flush. I'm going for value. I bet 350 to target hands containing the ace of spades. Perhaps I can get a crying call if the player has a 10 as well. The opponent is thinking about it, so he must have a hand with at least some showdown value. I'm rooting for a call. 25 seconds go by before he eventually folds. After getting called in two spots on the flop, I'm happy with that run out and that result. We're up about 400. Our game breaks a little later. I move to a different table where I'm dealt ace three hearts in the big blind. The cutoff limps in. The small blind calls for five more. I check. The dealer puts out ace seven three with two diamonds. We've got top and bottom pair. The small blind bets 30. He's a wild but nice dude who mentioned that he's seen some of the YouTube videos. I call to trap him and allow the cutoff to come along if he wants to experience the wrath. The cutoff indeed wants to. He calls. The turn is the deuce of diamonds. It's pretty bad because the flush draw gets there and 5-4 makes it straight. The small blind checks. My hand is still strong. I bet 50 to deny equity from hands that I'm currently beating. If I get raised, I'll likely fold. The cutoff calls. He does that a lot, so no need to be too concerned. The small blind folds. I'm heads up. The river is the king of hearts in a limped pot that should be a blank. I bet 100. The cutoff immediately folds. It's tough to even make a guess on what type of hand he could have had. One more pot comes our way. It's a good start for us. Next, we've got ace jack suited under the gun. I open to 30. The cutoff calls. He's a solid regular. The button calls. 
The action's on the big blind. He's the opponent that I described as wild in the previous hand with a short stack of 375. He three bet jams in our face. This is where game flow and a few other factors that are tough to convey in a vlog kick in. Against a lot of opponents, I'd snap fold. I don't necessarily need to risk an additional $345 after my early position gets jammed on. My sense in this exact scenario is that the big blind might be ripping it in with a variety of hands that I'm crushing, like smaller ace highs, or maybe even some worse holdings. This has potential to be a great spot to win a big chunk and stack this dude, but I don't want to call on a pure week for one of the players behind me to rejam and put me in a difficult spot. I want to isolate the big blind. I attempt a 4-bet min raise to 700. Technically, I needed to make it 720, which the dealer would have forced me to do, but it doesn't matter because the cutoff and button fold quickly behind me. We've successfully made it heads up for 375 each. I have no real clue if we're in the lead or not, though. The flop comes King Queen 4 with the King and Queen of Spades. We flop a Royal Flush Draw. We'll never have more outs to the nuts than this. The turn is the Six of Hearts. Oh God, we've only got one card to come in order to make a hand. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with Ace High. It'll be tough to win on this board if we brick. Let's see if any magic comes out of the like button. If we smash it all together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. The river is another four. It turns out the amount of likes has no effect on the run out. We had almost half the deck twice and we missed everything. The opponent looks to be somewhat embarrassed, but he has to show first. He turns over king 10 of hearts, good for top pair. He was trying to give me all of his dollars, but he accidentally won the pot. We had a great opportunity to pick him off. Instead, we're about even on the day again. Best flop ever, worst run out ever. Nice time. That one hurts, especially because it was a speculative play that I made that ended up being correct. Then I got punished. Oh well, I need to shake it off and try not to let it affect me too much. Two hands later, we look down at ace three suited in the small blind. A middle position player limps in. The hijack makes it 40. Cut off calls. It's a decent spot to three bet squeeze. I call, which isn't great. The middle position player calls for 30 more. We go four ways to the flop, out of position. The dealer puts out king six five with two clubs. We pop the nut flush draw once again. We also have one over and a backdoor straight draw. Checks around, maybe no one has anything. The turn is the five of hearts. I bet 120 into 170, not as a bluff, but just to build the pot because if I get called, I'm 100% gonna hit a club. Everyone knows it's impossible to miss piles of outs in two consecutive situations like this. The opponents all sense the pain that they're gonna have to endure if they call. They fold, we win a medium sized pot. The opponent from the previous hand figures this is a good time to take out a small needle and stab me with it. It's pretty hard. I don't know, man. Okay, dude. You're now at the very top of my revenge list. A while later, we pick up pocket sevens in the small blind. Somehow, I forget to capture my cards on the camera. I can't think of any solution other than to draw them. It took me a couple of hours. Lots of drawing for this episode. I hope you guys appreciate the great lengths I'm willing to go to in order for you to enjoy this top-notch production. The middle position player limps in. The button who beat me earlier with King-10 raises to 60. He ran his stack from 375 all the way up to 2,000 after doubling up through me and then four bed jamming for 1,000 with pocket nines and making quads. I call for 55 more. The big blind puts in calling chips. Middle position limper calls for 50 more as well. We're going four ways to the flop. The dealer puts out 743 rainbow. We flop top set against our nemesis and a few other opponents. I check to give the button an opportunity to bluff at it like I've seen him do in a ton of other hands today. The big blind checks. The middle position player checks. The button doesn't take the bait. He checks back. Now that he has a big stack, he may not want to play as crazy. The turn is another four. We improve to a full house. The problem is that there's not much more anyone else can have since we've got all of it. I check, hoping that someone has something or will take a stab at it as a bluff. No one does. The opponents all check behind. Perhaps they have high cards. The river is the king of diamonds. That's good because if they did have high cards, there's a decent chance someone will have top pair. I check one final time. The big blind checks. The middle position player checks. It's all up to the button to come through and save us. It's such a great card for him to bluff, given the action, even if he doesn't have anything. He unfortunately doesn't bite. Full house. So you make the minimum. Yep. We don't get him. The night is winding down, We're running out of opportunities. Then we pick up pocket sevens again. We're on the button. Our neighbor opens a 30 in the cutoff. I call with dreams of crushing him and doubling up. It's just me and him. The flop comes ace eight three all hearts. Not super great for our dream. The cutoff checks. I check back. The turn is the king of clubs. We both check again. The river is the nine of hearts giving us a flush. Cut off checks. It's hard to imagine he has us beat. I want to bet for value. It's tough to get calls on any worse hands. 
I throw out one $10 chip. The opponent immediately matches my bet. I turn over the cards. The player realizes that he's been taken all the way to Value Town for the price of a carne asada burrito with guacamole at Chipotle. He shows that he outflopped us with the ace of spades and the seven of diamonds. We finally drill the flush against this guy after breaking everything in the all-in hand before. Literal tears are streaming down his face because I wrecked his world so badly. My business here is done. The opponent has been removed from the revenge list. I can once again focus my energy on retrieving Marvin's older brother. I won $75 over about two hours and 40 minutes of playing. Game wasn't that great uh, towards the end, so then I, I picked up and left. Had a chance to get a nice win. If the ace-jack suited hand worked out, I had all the outs. I had too many outs is what happened. And couldn't hit any of them, but uh, still had some interesting hands and uh, had a good time overall. That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel quite a bit. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section and I'm happy to get back to you. Uh, be sure to take advantage of the pokercoaching.com giveaway. There's the link down below in the description box. That's just for you guys, just for viewers of this channel. So it's really cool that Poker Coaching was willing to do that. There's no credit card requirement and there's no limit on the amount of content that you consume. Also, uh, the vlog footage made a cameo on a Netflix series. It's called Ginny and Georgia. It's episode six, around the 12 and a half or 13 minute mark. There's like this flashback scene where they are trying to show like early 2000s poker essentially. But uh, in the footage, there's a double board bomb pot. And it's kind of funny because obviously they weren't doing double board bomb pots back then. Um, but they, they reached out to me, they asked if they could use the footage about a year ago or a year and a half ago. So uh, it's cool that you know it, it actually made the show. I was excited to see it. Um, hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you're staying safe. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you next time.